So, we already have a running AWS ELB or Elastic Load Balancer. We know that the load balancing is working properly. We know it's forwarding traffic to our EC2 or our targets. Let's look at how the health check works. Health checks, by the way, this is a feature of AWS Traffic Group to monitor our targets. In this case, our targets are EC2 instances. I am now here in our Elastic Load Balancer page, and we already selected our application load balancer, Sticks ELB. And under listeners and rules, we have our traffic group. As you can see, it's specified here, our traffic group is Sticks TG. And we want to look at it as we want to see the status of our tra targets as well as the configuration. And as you can see, we have two healthy targets. These are the Sticks Blog 1 and Sticks Blog 2. Now, how do we know why it is healthy and how can be unhealthy? How is the configuration settings? Now, I click this tab, Health Checks, and this is where we can change the health check settings. As you can see, the health check protocol is by default HTTP, and you can change it also to HTTPS. But since our web application is just using HTTP, we'll just use the default HTTP uh, option here. Now under health check path, we can also add a directory or a file, but we're gonna leave this as is, okay? Now under advanced health check settings, this is where we can uh, configure the thresholds. Now take note, although we are using HTTP health checks, maybe you're wondering what port is it using? Is it port 80? The answer is no, it's not port 80. If I click cancel, you will see that the protocol or the port using by this traffic group is port 8000, okay? Now, if I go to targets, look at this, six block one and six block two are using port 8000, both of them. Now, if I look back again at health checks configuration, you will see that health check protocol is HTTP, but it's using the default value of our target group configuration, which is port 8000, okay? And uh, take note, our containers or our EC2s are not even listening to port 80. Now, here's what we're gonna do. We are going to change that port. This traffic port here, this is selecting 8000, because again, that is the value configured in our traffic group. Now we can override that. If I hit override, what will happen is, we're going to change that default port 8000 to a customized or selected value here. Now we'll just leave this as port 80, the default. Now, if I hit save, what will happen is our traffic groups, two of them, oh no, so, sorry, the targets in our traffic group, both of them will become unhealthy. Now, before I hit save, let's verify the threshold values. Now, as you can see, we have the interval of 30 seconds. 30 seconds interval means that every 30 seconds, the traffic group will send HTTP health check, okay? But now we, are, we will change it to port 80. So meaning every 30 seconds, or it will count down 30, 29, 28, 27. And if it reaches zero, that's the time it will send HTTP health check, okay? Again, every 30 seconds. Now, also take note that unhealthy threshold is set to two seconds, okay? Now, there's a reason why we want to set this to two. Sometimes we can increase it, but let's discuss how it really works. And before I hit save change, um, there is another tab here, the timer. I will click this or I will start it after I click save, okay? Because we want to know how really long our status uh, transit from healthy to unhealthy. So I'm gonna click save, and then I'm gonna hit start. There you go. Now, as you can see, it's still healthy, right? And even, even if I hit refresh, it will still be marked as healthy. And why is that? Remember, we have 30 seconds interval, okay? So every 30 seconds, it will, that's the only time it will send HTTP health check, 
but take note, we are expecting failure. And after 30 seconds, it will not mark as unhealthy yet because it says here, unhealthy threshold to consecutive health check failures. So meaning we will expect two of these. Two times 30 will be 60 seconds. Now our time clock is 43 seconds. If I hit refresh, it will still be marked as healthy because we are expecting 60 seconds. Now, even if I hit refresh, what time is it? 55, it will still be marked healthy. Why? Because it's not yet 30 seconds plus five. It's, um, it will mark unhealthy after 65 seconds. So it already lapses um, 65 seconds mark. That's the time it become unhealthy. Again, it's because 230 seconds plus the timeout. Timeout means that after 230 seconds, it will still not mark it unhealthy. It will still gonna wait for five more seconds. That's why it's a total of 65 seconds. Now, let's test. We know that our two targets are unhealthy. As you can see, it is already marked as two unhealthy targets. Okay, unhealthy both uh, targets. Um, if I go to our web application, which is the Stick Show blog, and we are accessing it via our Sticks ELB, our application load balancer. The question is, if I hit refresh, are we still going to be able to access this web application? Is the ELB still going to forward the traffic to the two EC2s, to the two targets? Let's test. If I hit refresh, oh, we can still access this web application. Let's hit it multiple times. More refresh. Look, even if I hit refresh hundreds or thousands of times, I will still be able to access this web application. And why is that? Well, let's check the documentation. So there's a documentation, health checks for target groups. Okay, It says here that if a target becomes unhealthy, the load balancer sends a TCP reset flag for packet received on the client connection associated with the target. So meaning TCP reset, it will not gonna forward or the ELB or the load balancer will not gonna forward traffic to those targets anymore because in, it is unhealthy. You, are, you don't deserve to receive an HTTP traffic, okay? And it also says here, unless the unhealthy target triggers the load balancer to fail open. What does this mean? Okay, this is actually related to this sentence. If all targets fail health checks at the same time in all enabled availability zones, the load balancer fails open. What does it mean? The effect of the fail open is to allow traffic to all targets in all enabled availability zones regardless of their health status. So meaning all targets are unhealthy. That's why we're going to allow the traffic to all those targets. That is fail open. Now, let's look at the supporting configuration of that fail open. If I click attributes, Okay. And if I click edit, so this is the same configuration page where we select load balancing algorithm. We just selected the default round robin. We didn't change it actually. And this is also where we enable and disable stickiness. Okay. But if I click this arrow here, you will see the status of our targets. Zero out of two healthy targets. And we already know that both are unhealthy. Now you will see the action here. It says uh, it requires one healthy targets. If not, we will use this actions. Okay. If an unhealthy state DNS action, we use DNS fail over. And uh, if uh, unhealthy state routing action, we're going to use fail open. So this is what really triggers the fail open because it didn't, um, it didn't satisfy this requirement. One healthy target. So it triggered fail open and DNS fail over. What is DNS fail over? Well, we're going to talk about this in another video. So that's AWS ELB traffic group health checks. What do you think?
Is it better and more intuitive than F5 Big IP help monitors? Comment below if you have any questions and don't forget to hit the like button.